This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid. Hello, everyone. Today, we're looking back at the Smart Grid Technical Forum held in March of this year at The Hague and looking ahead to next year's event in Paris. SGT is one of the key forums for the power utility sector, from tech trends and cybersecurity to real conversations that happen on the exhibition floor. We're going to be unpacking what made this year's event stand out. Now, I'm joined by two fantastic guests who were active participants in the forum, Johan Malmström, who is a cybersecurity product owner at Westermo, and Paul van Dijk, Vice President of Business Development Europe at TRC. So let's dive into what they saw, heard, and took away from SGT25. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's great to be here, Mandana. Thanks, and look forward to a nice conversation here. So it would be great to know, um, from your point of view, what the big trends were that you picked up from the conference and in the exhibition at SGT25. Johan, your thoughts. Yes. Uh, so, so we talked with, together with my colleagues on this, and uh, we were a couple that participated in the meeting, and uh, we saw a couple of trends, uh, and the major trend that we started with and, and got started with was virtualization in digital substations. Uh, we saw that there was new discussions on this topic and but also new proof of concept, some interesting. Um, we saw that there was a trend on efficient engineering and, and uh, there, there are two schools in this, either, either start up by brute force, let's, let, let's get this done and, and learn by doing. And uh, the second one was, we need to solve everything first. We need to know what we're going to do because this is a major project. So that's, that's two, two major trends. Um, we also have that there's a lack of knowledge in the network uh, technology part um, and specifically IT network knowledge. That's something that is lacking. And, and how should we solve this? Uh, uh, engineering tools is another trend. Uh, but for us, um, private uh, private wireless networks is the one of, was was very interesting to see. Four uh, G, five G, Wi Fi, satellite communication for utilities yeah. specifically. Great, great. Yeah, some great insights that you picked up there, uh, Johan. In terms of the brute force approach versus the, the testing and waiting approach. Um, did you see a shift in terms of the number of utilities who are talking about kind of learning on the go as compared to the more cautious approach? Um, yes, I would say so. There, there, are, there are some that, okay, we need to do this, so let's let's go. Um, the, 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 I think that utilities has been a bit more cautious previously and try to, we need to know all, all, all everything we need to have ways of handling th hundreds or thousands of substations uh, at the same time. But uh, no, I, well, let's, let's, let's get started. I think that's a new approach. Yeah. yeah. So Paul, how about you? What uh, trends uh, did you pick up from the utility presentations and also from your fellow exhibitors there? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to share that. And I fully recognize, uh, Johan, what you, what you said, uh, that there's a, a clear shift in how utilities are looking at introducing new capabilities. In the past, they were very, very reluctant and focusing on reliability, but there's a tremendous uh, urgency at the moment where they need new capabilities. And I think that is that is what for me stood out or for us stood out. If uh, and. So the, the first thing that, that we realized and, and that came through all the presentations is the, the, the impact of renewable generation on one side and electrification on the demand side on the other side, which is impacting everything that, uh, that uh, uh, grid operators are, uh, are, are doing and facing. And uh, what we have seen, and it's a trend that we've seen a long time, that they're moving away from uh, TRC is, is a consultant more on, on IT OT uh, systems, so more on the software side, uh, and, and customers are moving away from silos and monoliths to more looking at process support and integrated systems. And uh, that is something we saw a long time, but now people really start working on that. And what, what um, held them back always was exactly what Johan said. First, we need to have high data quality. First, we need to have the system in order, et cetera, et cetera. And right now, what we've seen in all in several presentations, let's start small, let's start working, 
and build it from there. And that is uh, that renewables and electrification is, is putting a lot of, of re new requirements on uh, the DNOs and, uh, and TSOs, uh, particularly when the, the focus on resiliency, and it's not just climate resiliency, but also cyber resiliency, uh, resiliency or, or the impact of, let's call it physical events. Uh, I mean, there's a geo, the geopolitical, there's a lot going on, which is a threat, potential threat for, for those customers. And we see that they're looking how to create a more resilient uh, capability there. And the simple things to start small and, and um, uh, let's say build capabilities is on data visualization, where on several presentations, we saw the first uh, small projects of, uh, or, or implementations with huge impact already. That stood out for us. Right. Okay. That's really interesting. I mean, it is a, a considered a very conservative sector, slow moving, which can be, of course, very good in terms of making sure that systems are reliable and we don't suffer blackouts, but a little frustrating in terms of um, supplies entering the market. Um, what would you say in terms of percentage, just to give viewers an idea, how much faster have the utilities got this year as compared to perhaps the previous couple of years? in terms of their procurement speed? If, uh, in, um, well, it, it's, I'm not sure if it's just the procurement speed that is changing. I think overall, they um, um, they need to go faster. They feel that and they're doing that. So so I think all of us have been in the industry a long time. And <laughs> uh, if you compare it with, let's say, 20 years ago or so, uh, uh, I think the, 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 the lead times have, have probably halved or so. Uh, if uh, so, really, there's there's uh, over the past couple of years. I mean, it is it is slowly de uh, decreasing the, the 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 throughput times of of new projects of new implementations. But yeah. compared to twenty years, and, it's easily halved. Right, easily halved. Okay. Um, in terms of new suppliers entering the market, um, what's your recommendation for how they can navigate the sector, how they can best navigate the sector? Obviously, for the big established players with strong brand presence, with established relationships, it's a little easier. But new innovative suppliers, what would be your advice for how they should enter the market and what they should expect? I think this is a question for you, Paul. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping for a good answer there, but TRC relatively new here in Europe. In in all fairness, uh, we are we are scaling up. We have a huge U, a U.S. presence and a, and a strong U.S. brand, uh, but we're building up that brand as we speak and and our capabilities here in Europe. And for us, uh, uh, events like SGTech is uh, are fabulous events. They are they are right sized from our perspective. Uh, with the right audience, a very focused, targeted audience, um, uh, but still quite a quite a a, a large um, uh, pool of of, of uh, customers being there, but not a, a massive just a uh, just a trade fair. It it is not massive for us. It's right sized, the right people there, and and having the possibility to interact there, position the brand, but also have meaningful conversations at the same time. I think that is that is what I would recommend any, uh, let's say, startup scale up. Uh, well, it, this this is an ideal moment to build your network and build your uh, your credibility. Yeah, I agree with you, Paul. This is, I mean, we appreciate the the the, the utility heavy approach, uh, or that the, the 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 visitors are are the customers. That it's not only other vendors. Uh, the attendance we we. Uh, we get to our booth was very good. Um, the pe people are are the ones who are actually interested in our products. So, and uh, yeah, so yeah, the SGT concept is really good from that point of view. We reach out to the right audience for us. Great, great. Thank you. We, in, in terms of our planning for the next event and our planning for every event, actually, we conduct quite a lot of research with the utilities themselves. So I personally conduct interviews with around 100 utilities before we put the program together, define the content to make sure it's really objective and it's all the issues that are top of mind for the utility utilities and that's what draws them to the event we make sure that there's a 50 50 balance of utilities in the participation versus suppliers so that the conversations are really meaningful and in depth from a user perspective so with that in mind what would you recommend for the new suppliers coming on board to exhibit with us next year 
how should they really leverage the conference? Because it's not at SGT, it's not just about setting up your booth and then waiting for the traffic to come to you. There's so much going on, so many opportunities. H how would you recommend the conference should be leveraged by exhibitors? And how proactive do you need to be to really grab their attention? I think there's no, no. Thing, sorry, uh, um, on, uh, that is don't stay in your booth. Attend the, the talks uh, and listen to the presentation. There's so much communicated in those. And uh, that gives the, specifically maybe for a new company that is entering the market, what are the opportunities? What are the customers asking for? What is the, 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 that from a general perspective, then you get a lot of good interactions in the booth, but go to and listen to the presentation. There's a lot of knowledge there. I, and I cannot, I can only echo that, uh, Johan. And, and as, as you said, uh, Mandana, the, the research that you're doing, that is, uh, you, you will recognize that in the program and the fact that it's only customers uh, sharing their experiences, uh, or, and, 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 and well, telling their stories. I mean, that is, that is so valuable. And if you look at day one, which is, which is, uh, let's say, uh, more of a senior level uh, that, that is where the business is heading uh, which is which is from an overall perspective relevant and on day two day three that is that is where let's say the details are going if you go there and and have the follow-up conversations actively reaching out to to uh, customers that are there i mean for me that's the, the best way to get value out of this event great well we're looking forward to planning sgt26 in paris and we're delighted that um, Johan and Paul, you're both going to join us again. So that's fantastic. We're looking forward to welcoming, welcoming you back. Um, what do you hope to get out of the next edition? How would you like to build on your participation and take your interactions and your uh, sort of the output of the event to the next level for yourselves? Uh, so for, for us as TRC, as, as, as we said, uh, we, we are a scale up here in Europe. Uh, we uh, we just started late last year in, in in Europe, so we are relatively new. We hope next year that we will be able to uh, to share first experiences, uh, where they are our first references, uh, but but definitely build on on it from there. So people will recognize uh, us as a company, as a trusted business advisor, as the go to party for when it comes to ITOT integration or implementations. Uh, but but critical is indeed that that. Uh, <laughs> We let's call it the lend and expand, and and in uh, these events, that's where we can leverage the, the context, share those experiences, or ideally have customers share those experiences, so that that from there we can continue growing our business. Great, thank you, Paul. And you have yeah, your um, thoughts on that. I think we partly can say we are Vestimos Network Technologies is a growing company. We just uh, announced a. a acquisition of, of Velotech so and we we work with a lot of different partners so we we think that uh, we want to make sure that we 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 come come as a solution provider not only as a, a router or fi a firewall or a switch deliverer so we are vendor of those products but we also have a um, a good cooperation with 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 other colleagues in the business so uh, I hope we can make something with that. I'm not telling too much on how we want to go. But <laughs> Great. My final question for each of you is, if you could have one wish for something new in the presentations from the utilities for next year, what would that one wish be? That's a hard one on that. The, the one wish. <laughs> that, uh, yes. Um, for me, it, it, it is it is um, uh, it would be something around the integration of the different systems. And uh, what what I like about SD Tech is that the, uh, that there's different track, uh, and they're all discussing about the specific uh, elements for their tracks. And I think um, uh, and and you see it a little bit on day one. Uh, that let's say the the process through all those tracks that that is that is critical. But how to really connect the, I mean, the substation automation is input for all the software systems and uh, uh, the, the smart meter part and control systems are also related. And somehow that integration part is, is probably an element in how to deal with that. That might be an, an approach from my perspective. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I, 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 you I mean, I'm at my heart, uh, good communication guy or so, but, but also cybersecurity is very important. So, um, 
I would like to see if, if a utility is talking about how they have and got experience about the standards appliance, NIST 2 directives, the 62443, how they implement, I mean, experience from, from their part to see how, because that helps us as a vendor of products to see, uh, see these things. And uh, yeah, that I think that, that would be a wish. I, I, I think that's, yeah. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much for your insights and your recommendations, gentlemen. It will be hugely helpful for the new suppliers that we're inviting into uh, HDT26 in Paris. And we look forward to seeing you there again. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Join us again next week as we unpack another big topic shaping the future of the power grid. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and catch us on LinkedIn as well. Until then, thanks for listening. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid.